Today we're just going to quickly knock out the mean model, um, which is a very rudimentary way of doing this, but we're going to find this a lot in finance. Uh, so in utilizing the mean model, I just want to quickly recap where we left off. We imported three different libraries from NumPy as NP, Pandas as PD, and Matplotlib.PyPlot as PLT. Uh, make sure you have this added, otherwise the uh, functions are not going to work. Uh, we had a variable X, we created evenly spaced values from 0 to 100 numbers from 0 to 2 times uh, pi. And this is how we got pi, mp.pi. We kind of generated a random seed of 321. This way, this way, every time we run it, we'll get the same values, even though we're utilizing a random function, uh, just so it can, for consistency. Uh, then we added noise to this so that we would get, um, I can bring it up real quick. Let me go to here. Generating noise. The red is our perfect sine wave. And then the blue scatter points are the general points created with the line space uh, with the noise here. So it's just a random normal distribution, 100 numbers, uh, with the standard deviation of 0.5. Um, and that's what we have here as y equals mp sine of x. So this is now the function. Originally, it would have been y equals uh, sine of x. So every x we put in, we're just taking the sign of that, and that would have been giving me the corresponding y for this red line here, and we added the noise, which was the blue. And then uh, we had created a pandas data frame, so data frame equals pd dot data frame. Uh, the input was going to be the x that we created up here, and then the target was going to be our y that we created. And uh, this is a very simple model. Um, printed just to see it so we could see what the actual uh, data frame was producing here. And if you wanted to check the variation of the numbers, you could to make sure that they were of a normal distribution and line space, you, by all means, you could if you wanted to. And then we did our plotting function. So we first, we plotted a scatter. And again, the scatter is the blue dots that you're seeing here, taking two inputs, your X and your Y. And then we had, we plotted, um, a plot is gonna take the curve of the X and the curve of the Y. So the X was just the inputs that we generated uh, up above from our data frame, and then the y was going to be the sign of the the np sign inputs because this is our formula that we're utilizing. Um, so this plot was no noise. This was the perfect, the perfect plot, which was the red line that we have here, and then the red color was red, and the plate that we and the plate. Excuse me, we plt dot show, and that's how we actually got the graph. So what I'm going to do today is we want to take the same data frame that we're utilizing, and we want to. Um, put a mean model on it. So we have our fake data set. We're going to plus the models, see how they're going to predict the target variable. So first off, the mean model, the mean is just going to be the average. So we're average of what? Well, we're taking all the averages of the y, essentially. So the simplest model there is, is the mean model. It'll always predict the average of all the y's in the data set, no matter what the value of x is. So it, it, that's the important thing that has no, it does not matter. Since we're taking the average of, the, of all the y's, it does not matter what the x is going to be. The answer is always going to be the average of the y's. So uh, it's rather rather crude to do, but pretty simple. So we'll just mean model it. And what are we using for this? Well, good old NumPy. It has a mean function, and we're taking the mean of what? I said our y, so that's our target, all right? So now we created a variable, and in the variable we have taken the mean of all the, of, all of the uh, y values. And if we want to actually do that so we can see what that number is going to be, I can do that real quick. I'm just going to close the graph when it comes up because I don't need it right now. So this is all of our DF head. So this here is our mean for the mean model now. This is our mean, negative 0 0.01725 extended, extended. So we have our mean model that we created in terms of the calculation. Now let's plot it and see how it does. See how that model does compared to... Um, before we get into more more complex and more appropriate models. So the same way we're going to do this is no different than before. So we're taking plt.scatter, and we want our x, which is the input, data frame input, And then we're going to need our y, which was the data frame target. All right, so now we have our scatter diagram, which is going to give me the input and the target that we created from our uh, data frame up above top here. So the scatter is going to be the essentially the, the noise of it all. And then we want to plot. What are we plotting? This is where it's going to be a little bit different. 
our x is going to be the df input, right? And then if you remember before with our formula for what we were plotting, we were doing the um, the perfect version of the sine waves just so we could see see it over the graph over the scatter plot. What we're doing now though is we want to we want to plot this mean model. So by plotting the mean model, all we have to do is call the mean model, right? But we're going to multiply it by the length of the data frame. We'll multiply it by the data frame input, which is going to be our axis. And I'm going to show you what that does in, in just a moment. It might be a little counterintuitive. So you're going to notice I'm putting this in brackets, right? So we're creating a list of it. It's more like an array than anything else. And what did I say we're going to do? We're going to multiply the length of the x's. And then um, just for simplicity's sake, let me see if I'm going to close that off or not. I'm going to have to, I'm going to get an error unless I close that off. You're closed off. I need one more for you, and then you'll be my total plot function. Uh, the last thing I have left to do um, is re remember the color. So we're going to say red, and I want it to be, I might use the plus sign as what I want it to represent itself in the graph. All right, still green, so we're still good. Uh, and then, of course, we want to see it, right? So show me, show me this plot. All right, so let's see how we do if we run this. It's going to give my first graph, the way pie chart works. So we have our first graph with the normal sine wave and then all of our noise. I'm going to close it. It should bring up my second, and we have success. So as you can, again, see down here, we printed the mean model number, the actual average of all the Ys that we have here. And so that number is uh, negative 0 0.01725. So this, the red, the red plus signs here are plus because we put the red plus sign there. So what this graph is doing, uh, so you can see how we just have a straight up, I don't like that there, I just want to bring that in. We have a graph that's showing us all of our scattered points there. So that if we're looking at the plot, as the, so, sorry, the scatter again is the inputs, the X's and then the Y's. And then for the plotting, we're plotting the inputs. That's going to be our X part of the curve, which is the input. So each of these X's has an input on the curve. And then to get the Y portion of the curve, we just took the mean model, which was the 0 0.01725, multiplied by the length of the uh, data frame input, which is the X's. So you might sit there and say that's negative 0 0.01725 times 100, right? Because we created the data frame um, input is 100 different values. So... Um, you sit there and say, oh, well, then I'd have 100, I'd have 100 pluses here. And that would be the correct thing. It wouldn't be, it's not the mathematical variation of 100. What I mean by that is this. I wanted to show the show, because remember, this is inside of a, a list. We're in brackets there. So that's the same as saying X is B, Y equals X, which is just the letter B, the string of B times three. So what is that going to do? Let me bring this over to test real quick. And as you can see, it's going to print out the letter B. It doesn't print out 3B. It prints out the letter B three times. So if we, if this is a negative 0 0.07 and I'm multiplying it by 100, we're going to get it 100 times. So each, each X value uh, is going to have the, uh, each X value is going to have the same exact Y value. This is printing out the Y values for our curve. So this, you can see here we have when we're plotting we have our x value that we're putting in so x could be zero and then the y portion that we created is 0 0.07 and then for the x of one 0 0.07 the x of two 0 0.07 and so on and so forth that's why it's a straight line that's exactly why that's exactly why this is a straight line because for every x we have the same exact y and that's what we meant by the mean model. It's taking it's taking the average of it. So looking at this, um, do you think it's a good model? Do you think that this red line here has any predictive value for the blue dots, for the scattered dots that are on our graph at the moment? Um, I'm hoping you're going to think no, but no matter how much data you collect, some of the values of predictions really, really suck um, in, in, in regards to X. So you might say, well, you know, over here, it's fine. Over here, it would predict for... You know x's of, of of zero and you know a couple of these points here it's fine but look at all this out here and all this out here you'd say no it's absolutely horrific it sucks um so this model does not have the flexibility to learn the curves and the slopes that exist within the data set uh, notice that it's learn meaning it just it can't predict properly if it cannot learn properly it has to learn the relationship to create the function uh, in order to to 
predict properly. Um, so this model we would say is, is utterly underfit. It is massively underfit to the data. It is not complex at all in terms of underfit, remember underfit, really bad train, um, horrific, horrific. So no good at all. Um, if you're having a hard time understanding this red piece here, just remember that we're, it's just, it's just giving us our, our Y, our X and our Y to plot that piece. And I think the thing that screws up most people is the, um, prediction times the length of the data frame input. And again, that's just taking the, uh, the mean, the mean model calculation that we got, which is the negative 0 0.1725 and, and putting that out 10 times. So that's actually each individual one is really the X value. And then the Y is 0 0.17 and then the X value and then the Y is 0 0.17. It goes on and on, on that way. That's why it's a straight line. All right, guys, uh, shorter piece today. Uh, next video, jumping into uh, linear regression. Um, most places don't even cover the mean model, but I think it's important to start at the very worst and work your way up because uh, there may be a reason or something to bench off of the mean model from to have an idea of if you're doing anything more appropriately or not.